All right, guys, onwards and upwards for Shine in week six. We're in game six now. Shine with three wins under his belt. We're going to see if he can continue that forward. We have him in the top left here. In the bottom left, we have Barracks, our last Terran player. In fact, there's only one Terran and one uh, Protoss player left. And even if Shine loses, Beast is still there to pick up the pieces. So definitely looking pretty good for Team Zerg right now. You know, I, I mean, I mentioned at the beginning, uh, Shine is the most experienced player uh, that we have. So, I mean, that, that definitely accounts for something in StarCraft. It kind of shows the beauty of it in a lot of ways. Uh, that, you know, someone that, uh, even though he's not, like, thought of that much right now, I think, right? Like, he had that ASL Finals, and, like, everyone knows who he is, and he's very good. But, you know, a lot of these other players we talk about a lot more, they're super active, their skill levels are getting, like, really, really high, and still shine and showed them who's boss so far. Uh, and now here on Polypoid, we're going to see if he can do that against Barracks, who Barracks, I guess, actually, out of everyone else... Uh, like, he's the second most accomplished, maybe, right this second. Uh, it's kind of close between everybody else, but Barracks has been having some good, strong ASL, ASTL runs. Um, where he's just, he's been playing very, very well overall. He's a very modern Terran. So, I kind of like in the game against Scan, I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if Barracks can take out Shine, but maybe I need to stop doubting this guy. <laughs> Hatchery first goes down for Shine. Barracks going to go ahead and scout. Just has the racks on the way. We'll see if he wants to throw down a... No, nope, no gas coming up. So we are certainly going to be seeing a Barracks expansion. Probably just standard bioplay coming out of him. We'll see how, uh, how Shine can fare against that here. I mean, it was pretty standard out of, uh, out of scan uh, a couple games ago, right? So, you know, it's... He, he, he knows how to play against it, that's for sure. Got the screaming bird visiting us here. Not screaming for us here today. Bye. And an SCV just kind of sitting on the ramp there for a moment. Not sure what this is all about, what he's doing here. Kind of weird movements here. I think he's, like, trying to check if he's being Zergling rushed. <laughs> That's... The movements were very strange, though. The way he went back and forth right here. Anyways, uh, whatever it was we have for Shine, he's actually going for a three-hatch play. Just straight-up three-hatch. This is old-school three-hatch, where, uh, you know, there's there's three-hatch... There, there's basically... You know, th this is how we refer to Zerg builds uh, a lot of the times, is the hatchery number. So, basically... For a long time, three hatch was normal, uh, but then it just like the five racks plus one attack upgrade builds came out for Terran and got really, really strong. And Zergs had a hard time securing their third base. So they kind of went away and two hatchery became the thing to do. Now there was a reemergence of three hatch play on some maps where the third hatch is at the third base. And then there was the 2.5 hatch and just two hatch muta like into a very fast third base like before the mutas were even out so uh this is a much slower gas timing uh for shine here now that being said he's already got speed going and he starts the layer as barracks gets up here so i don't think there's any way that barracks is fooled at all um because that was so late, like, the, the SCV saw the layer start. And when you see a layer starting close to four minutes, like, that doesn't even make sense, even with three hatch build. That's just, like, very, very slow. So I think you can look at this and kind of divine that there's Zergling speed on the way, I think. Unless he just happened not to be looking at his SCV, because it started right after he got vision. The layer did. And based on the marine movement, I think that's definitely a possibility. Now, these Marines moving way out onto the map as a, an SCV is going for a scout. Like, there are so many speedlings, or so many lings out right now that are going to be speedlings momentarily. Now, he sees that speed is done. Is Barracks going to be able to turtle up a little bit here? Oh, look at this. He's actually... Where is he going with these Marines? This is a very peculiar game so far. Now, 
Shine starts to attack up the ramp. The SCV drill is going to help out quite a bit, but actually displaces some of those Marines. So it looks like, uh-oh, this is starting to get a little bit out of hand. Shine doing a ton of damage right now, picking off quite a few SCVs. Oh my god, loses that Marine as well. Two more Marines will be popping out here momentarily, but more Lings are coming down. Now, this little group of Marines that left his base is going for a counterattack and has real potential since all the Lings are coming down across the map right now. Now, the Lings targeting down these SCVs. Medic's trying to heal them up. The two Marines from the back doing a good job picking them off, though. And here we go. Stim is done. And these Marines going forward into the natural. So a ton of damage going to be dealt there as well. Oh, my God. An insane game. A little bit of, well, a lot of bit of a counter punch here from Barracks. He's going to go ahead and Stim again as well. Pull back into a more kind of defensive position here as he's stimming and trying to take down the natural hatchery. Now, here come the speedlings. He stims for a third time, so everything's so low on health at this point that, yeah, that, that wasn't going to have much of a chance. But this hatchery almost went down. The spire is still being made. A lot of speedlings being fielded. 14 drones against 21 SCVs. Those are very, 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 very low numbers on both sides for this stage of the game. So both of their economies have been rather crippled. But I have to say, I like this slightly more for shine right now this is scary what we see walking out across the map but on this very low economy he's still got like enough gas and he's gonna make six or seven mutas here very shortly and you don't really have a lot of money to add missile turrets right now yeah look at this the lings once again getting on top of everything a stim forward here from barracks but the sunkins are going to be finishing and it looks like more scvs will end up falling not that many a good hold but just the fact that he lost most of his bio running into Sunks is no good. And now with Mutas on the way, look, four being made. 400 gas in the bank, so he can make four more pretty quickly. And look at the, the position here. I mean, you're sitting here making fire bats against someone who's literally hatching Mutas right now. The Lings catch those medics on their way back as well. Yeah, yeah, I stand by it. I think Shine is in a better spot, even though it's 15 drones to 27 SCVs. Uh, because he's just going to have so much potential. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Marine Special Forces Pro Gamer over here. Getting that one health Marine back in the bunker. But seriously, like, the damage potential of these mutas is going to be pretty high. We have, like, one turret finishing here. None at the main CC. Only two here. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit scary. It's only five mutas so far, but he's going to be able to build that up a little bit more. You can play muta with pretty low econ overall. No turrets at the main uh, really makes me a little bit nervous for him. The Marines come out immediately to push back these Mutas. All right, grouping up. Flies right over this missile turret. Scouts the timing of the factory, so that's like valuable intel. No turret over on this side, so that's a little bit annoying as well. This is kind of a new thing that we're seeing, by the way, in TVZ, is you always get a turret on the other side of the natural because they and the other side of the command center, just because they always do those moves now, finding every little way in for some damage. So the Mutas actually, honestly, they don't get that much done, but you can see that Shine is droning madly at home. Like, he's actually going to be ahead of Barracks in uh, Workers relatively soon, the third hatchery really helping out with that. Mutas combing through the map a little bit. Looks like he is going to go ahead and catch this SCV that was literally coming up here to look for this drone that was coming. So it looks like the third base is going to be taken by Shine in the top right. His economy has basically recovered. He's going Hive as well. This might... Th there's the real possibility that this will just be a Guardian Rush. Like, he's doing nothing but making mutas right now, and everything is so slowed down uh, by uh, Barracks here. And look, yeah, he's got a machine shop. Oh, okay, Hydralis Den gets made. I, I think if Shine had decided to go into Guardian, that would have been a very strong choice for what is, is happening here, but looks like that's not going to be the case. Move Command, Muta's flying over masses of Marines. Not something you expect to see, but it occurred. But the push going up towards the natural. Looks like Barracks just wants to try to bust, maybe, but there are a lot of Muta's here to contend with. A full group now. See if Barracks' micro is true. 
A few units being sent off while this group micros against those mutilists. A very common move. The Overlord should be able to spot. Yeah, it does spot some of those going. We'll see if Shine actually realizes about that and can send out something to deal with it. But right now he's going to worry about the main force maybe a little bit more. Two Sunkens, not quite enough to hold that, but he's making a lot of Zerglings as well, and he's going to bring those down. I think Shine should be able to kill off this army pretty easily now. Yeah, comes in with the flank. The Muta is going to kill this off very, very quickly. Now, this hatchery is almost done. If he makes a beeline up here right now, he should be able to save it as well. No attack as of yet for Barracks. I think I think Barracks doesn't realize that there was an Overlord here, so he thinks that Shine has no idea. He's sitting here. He's just kind of waiting. I think he is waiting for the Mutas to like attack him or something, and unfortunately, he's going to pay for that. Unable to get any damage done. Shine, look at the minimap. Look at this as I zoom out, right? He's got Zergling spread, Overlord spread, just about everywhere. I mean, you can't get by him right now. Defiler Mound coming up. Nidus for that third base. The Lurker upgrade almost done. Adrenal. Very, very, very quickly. I didn't actually expect to see that that quickly. It's a great upgrade, though. Coming down now with these mutas. A full group still. And, I mean, he's got two siege tanks. So, you. here's the thing, though. Consume has already been started. Siege mode just got started, like, later than Consume. So... There's actually no chance for the Siege Tanks to do a successful push. Like, Consume basically ends the utility of Siege Tank pushes. So, yeah, liking this quite a bit right now for Shine. Now, let's see what Barracks has going on that's actually really, really strong here. He does have that plus one attack with plus one armor on the way, whereas Shine doesn't really have any upgrades. He's starting two Evolution Chambers now. But being up a couple upgrades is pretty significant in this matchup, that's for sure. Well, Shine is actually targeting down the eBay. Oh my god, he's gonna get it. Oh my god. Like, I... You just don't expect to see things like that, but that irradiate, absolutely beautiful. Dealing a ton of damage to all of those Mutalisks there. So, very strong moment from that Science Vessel. But where can the damage be dealt by Barracks here? He's actually down in supply a little bit, which is... Not where you want to be against Zerg early on. Another macro hatchery coming out. Multiple defilers as well. Looks like uh, Shine tried a little counterattack here with the Lings, but Eric's a little bit too quick. Holds that off. No real defense over at this base, but he does have the Nidus ready if he needs to. Sounds like a few more Mutas dying as they do retreat towards that main base. And look at this, eating some Scourge. Going to be able to throw down the Dark Storm, and bam! You burrow that, and, well, no damage is going to get dealt. You can see how the Siege Tank's pretty impotent right here, unfortunately. And you don't have enough Vessels to consistently irradiate uh, Defilers. Now, Plague on the way here as well from Shine. Taking a little bit of damage there from the Dark Swarm. He's hoping that this can run out, but Shine just pops a Defiler back out to throw down another Dark Swarm. So that's solved once again. Do have a few units in position there for possibly a little bit of counter attacking. Defiler's being sent through the night. A couple more macro hatcheries as well. Shine really taking control of this game. He's actually up in workers now also. Another tank was made. Another Sarport coming up now. All right, the siege up. Oh, ho, 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 he splatters two lurkers. He splatters all those lurkers there. And this one's irradiated before the Defilers can get their spells off so quick. Some great connections there onto the high ground lurkers. Barracks making a game of it. Yeah, this is a big, big moment. Look at this. Kills the Defiler as well. Oh, my God. Like, he has got to get a Dark Storm up, and he does get it up. Okay, so it looks like he should be able to pick off the Nidus. Seven hit points up. Are you kidding me? He needs to kill this Nidus. It was literally one Marine shot from death. 
And now he's trying to walk through these Dark Swarms. A terrible position here. Okay, he did end up getting the Nidus. So maybe he can actually kill this base off. We'll see more reinforcements coming up right now. All right, this game is starting to become interesting. It felt like Shine had a stranglehold on it, but the quick moves there from Barracks, along with, you know, well, honestly, the not quick moves from Shine getting that Dark Swarm up. Uh, yeah, looking good now. The Filer is out, going to throw down another Dark Swarm here, but this is irradiated, so going to be a little bit difficult to deal with that. More Lurkers coming up. Can he throw down another Dark Storm? No, he does not have the energy for it right now. But it looks like a Plague did go out. The Defilers, well, no energy. But with the Plague out and the tank gone, it looks like the Lurker Ling should be able to clear the rest of this force out. And Shine going to hold on to his third base. Some great moves, no doubt, from Barracks. But not enough. Doesn't, doesn't really... Uh, Get the base killed off, or the main hatchery at least in it. Okay, taking a look over on Barrick's side of the map. He's got the plus one. Don't forget he lost the uh, uh, eBay before armor finished. He has two on almost finished. That's that's really good. That's really important. Uh, since we already have one one over on the Lings. Ultras are being made now, added in. Kiteness plating is almost done here as well. So that's going to be the next thing that he kind of has to deal with. The fact that Ultras are out, you got to kind of clump your army up a little bit more, which can make the Plagues a bit stronger. Nice radiate onto some Scourge there. Much better to irradiate them than to lose the vessel. The radiate goes down. And, oh, gets a Plague, just catches the tail side of the Science Vessel. Now, it looks like Shine wants a fourth base. Going ahead, burrowing a couple of Lurkers here. Well, you can't, like, I mean, that's enough irradiates. You've got to send a lot more through than that, I think. And actually, we don't have a Nidus. He does have a little bit more of tech units up here. Uh, one Lurker remains, so... He actually could kill that off with these Fire Bats, honestly. Ooh. Well, <laughs> he gets the Plague off, so that's really what counts there. I was going to say that Dark Storm, not too useful. Okay, Barracks taking another base. Vessels as well as dropships being made. Oh, I think this was probably a failed dropship, these units here. Probably what happened was he went to go in and Scourge caught, turned around and tried to drop out as much as he could before it got caught. Oh, some vessels end up dying here, unfortunately. It's going to make it a lot harder to break through everything in the future. Now, there's only one Ling under this Dark Swarm. So that would actually be very, very breakable right now. This might be his only chance to kill this base, but I think he doesn't realize that there's nothing really left over. Now, a little counterattack with the Filers towards the main. There's no Irradiates ready. This could be like a game-ending move, basically. If you get Dark Swarm into the Terran Natural at any point in the game, it's pretty deadly. All right, Lings go up, deal with the Siege Tank. Irradiate does go off as he brings the Vessel back. And a Dark Swarm goes down. Another Dark Swarm on that ramp, and now the Ultras can run a little bit wild. Third base. Gonna lose a lot of SCVs here as well. The Ultra actually having our time. The Ultras can't fight on top of barracks because they don't fit in between where Marines do. But the Ultras at the natural causing a bit of a problem. That Ultra does get picked off. A lot of craziness going on in the middle of the map as well. Another little counterattack going down. Only a defiler. What is this? Two Scourge to defend the natural. That's not going to work out. So a stim forward. Looks like that fourth base very likely to fall. But having to lift up his natural. His third base has no SCVs at it right now. And he only has what's popping out of his barracks at home. Which is not going to deal with Ultras. Like I mentioned, you need big armies to deal with Ultras. So this is looking like it's just about the end. Even though barracks is doing damage over here. The actual army that's in his base is dealing too much damage to him. Like, honestly, even if he killed this base, like, he can't produce enough to kill these Ultras ever. GG is called, and Shine takes out another one.